Hello, everyone, and welcome to AI with Suhini, where we talk about anything and everything in this transcendent and ever-changing world of artificial intelligence. If you are intrigued and excited about understanding what is it that is happening in this world of AI, what are the new models, what are the new tools, how can I stay updated with every single thing, uh, what algorithms are getting used, and how do I stay ahead and apprised of everything which is uh, new and, and amazing in this AI, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science and analytics world, this is the channel for you. For anybody who is joining in again and who has subscribed to this channel, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for doing so. And I apologize for having been away for the last few months. I had to take care of my parents' health, my own health, my family health, had to prioritize that. And also in order to get my dopamine levels high up so that I can come back recharged in order to continue the fabulous research in this realm of artificial intelligence. So thank you again for joining, subscribing, sharing, liking, and being a part of this community. So today's video is going to be about how to stay apprised and how to stay updated in this world of AI. Now today I'm going to be showing you some of the latest and greatest tools which are for beginner levels as well as for intermediate levels. What does that mean? If you are not interested in coding at all and you just want free tools at your disposal in order to get and stay updated What's happening in the finance world? What's happening in the corporate world? What's happening with data science? What is the latest and the greatest? You always want to stay updated without having to code at all. If that is your intent, then this is the video for you. So if this is of interest to you, please hit the subscribe like and like and share this video. So let's get started. Now, large language models or chatbots, if you may, have come a long way so far. Now, typically what these large language models or these chat GPT models can do is whenever they are getting trained, they store information in their neurons so that when you ask a question, it is able to go back to its memory, find the most matching information and give that information back to you. Now, most of the products that are currently out there in the market, they use a method methodology which is called Retrieval Augmentation Generation or RAG. And what RAG really means is you take the most pertinent information and the all the large language model does is it just summarizes it or repackages it so that you understand it in a better format. Now, let's try to understand information. All information can be charted into three major buckets. The first bucket is information that rarely changes. It's more or less deterministic in nature. For instance, what is the distance between the Earth and the Sun? How many planets are there in our solar system? What is the height of an Eiffel Tower? What is the height of a Burj Khalifa? Now, these are facts that most likely are not going to change. So these Factoids are always can be considered as a part of a large language model's head. Now, this is information that most likely does not change and it's always going to be accurate. So you can ask Alexa or Siri. They will most likely give you always the right answer. The second bucket is information that sometimes changes, but not always. For instance, if you want to know about a country's GDP or if you want to know if the insurance prices are fluctuating or not, so this is information that does change, but not very frequently. And the third kind of information is information that fluctuates very often. For instance, the weather, the humidity, the temperature, or it can also be your cricket scores or, you know, in any match scores as you're watching it live. So as the information is fluctuating by the hour or by the minute or by the second, then that can be considered to be a part of the large language mod models tail. So Head is information that is most likely not changing. Tail is an information that is always changing. And body is most likely information that changes, but not at a very rapid pace. Now, what are the tools that you can use in order to retrieve all of this information that can sometimes be a part of the head, the body, or the tail? Now, understanding that retrieval of information using large language models if you are asking a question pertaining the head 
or information that rarely changes, you can ask any of the large language models and they will always give you most likely the right response. But then if you if it comes to information such as at the tail, for instance, if you ask, what are the best restaurants near me? And if you are traveling, then of course, your information about your context, that means where you are located, is very important in order to make recommendations to you. Or if you ask questions like, What's the weather going to be today evening? So you need to know what you, where you are located along with the date in order to, for you to really know what the weather is going to be in, in that day evening. So all of this information is most likely part of the tale, which sometimes the free versions of large language models can get wrong. Mm. So that's the reason why we have AI agents or Gen AI agents. What AI agents do is you don't really just ask the question to a large language model, but the large language model takes the help of a Google search. So just imagine that rather than you typing the question on, on the you know, search engine and, and looking at the response and then scrolling through it to, in order to understand what the response really was, now you have a mechanism where the large language model automatically does this web search for you and then it compiles this information and explains it to you in the way you want it. That is called a Gen AI agent. And today I'm going to show you how to design your own generative AI agent at the luxury of your home so that you can brag and tell all your friends that you have designed a Gen AI bot. Let's get started. So there are three tools that I'm going to be using. The first one is called Poe. Poe is what empowers Quora today. And this is a great place where you can literally, um, you know, chat with whatever large language model you want to choose. So you have a huge plethora of, of large language models to choose from where you have the Claude, you have Gemini, you have GPT-4.0, you have image-based, you have text-based, you have a whole slew of different large language models that you can play with and interact for free. So Poe is typically powered by Claude uh, from Anthropic. So that is something that we are going to be testing out today. The second one that we are going to be testing out, of course, is going to be ChatGPT. Uh, and again, it has ChatGPT along with GPT-4.0. And the third one that we are going to be using is Gemini. So these are the three that we are going to be testing our analysis on. So now let's try out our AI agent based approach. Now, as we understand, an AI agent is where the large language model first does a web search. And then from there, it, it takes all of the responses and it compiles it in the way the user wants it. So AI agent based responses take more time to compile than a, a very clear question answer that you just ask the large language model and it just furnishes you the response based off of its own knowledge and memory. So let's try by asking a tricky question. So as you can see, the AI agent is, it took some time, but then it, it's clearly not something that it is, it is you know, trained or it is ready to do. So that's the reason why I just said, I cannot help you. Now let's go to ChatGPT and see what happens. Now here, as you can see, it is searching the web. It tells you clearly, it's first it's going to the web and it's doing a search. And from there, it is now compiling these responses in order to give them to you in a very understandable and crunchable manner so that it's easy to follow. So as you see that it clearly told you that it searched five sites and all of these sites are already, you know, already present. And then on top of that, it really took information from all of these sites and it compiled it for the user. So this is how an agent typically works. It takes the question, it first does a search based off of the search, the responses are compiled and they are brought back. And what would happen if you just had the same question, but just the large language model, uh, you know, was, was working just off of its own memory. So if you ask that, that question to Paul, you see, it goes back to August 2023, because that is exactly where uh, Poe, or, or in this case, it's Claude, uh, that's where it was trained. So it is if it only goes by its own memory, it goes to stale information. So if you're only using a uh, uh, chat GPT just to talk to at, at all time, you might encounter stale information just because the large language model may not be updated with the latest information that you are looking for. 
So that's the reason why having AI agents is always a better mechanism, although it might take some time, it's always a better mechanism to make sure that the information that you are getting is always the right one and updated one. Let's try another question. And again, in this case, as you see, the the question first in, invoked uh, a web search and from the search, this information was, was you know, given and that is what is rendered to the, to the user. And again, if you want to have help understanding, you can literally click on, uh, you know, the Gemini statements in, in order for it to tell you which ones it is mostly confident on. So all of these uh, statements uh, are actually from a site. So that's the reason why it can tell you that these are, this is all of the information that has links that you can cross refer uh, or, or check against. Now, let's try to ask the same question side by side on ChatGPT and then on Paul. So now ChatGPT, as you are seeing, again, it did the same thing. It searched five sites. These are all of the latest sites. And from the sites, then it compiled its results in order to get to the information. Always remember, this is how an agent is, is designed. You always get to a web search first. And then from there, you compile the information as you require. And the same thing if you ask Poe, just because it does not have the capability of first doing the web search, it tries to go back to its own memory, its own knowledge, which is from August 2023. And that's the reason why the information is stale. Now, with all of this in mind, what I wanted to share with you is your own AI agent that you can now design. I would highly recommend that if you want to have your own version of an AI agent and always make sure that the information is delivered to you in the way you like, then this is an example that I highly recommend you use. So this is the AI agent collab that I have generated, and this is going to be the link in the, in the description below. So what you will need to do is whenever you see this link, you will need to go to file and save a copy in drive. And once you do, then it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be called copy of AI agent. And then you should be able to drive it. Let's start by running all of these cells. So I have everything in, in a form, you know, format. So you can just click on each and every one of them. Now, the one thing that you require for this is an open AI key. So if you are an experimenter, what you will need to do is you will need to go to open AI. And in OpenAI, you will need to log in. And once you are here, you will need to go to your profile and say user API keys. And in this case, you will need to create a new secret key. That's all you need to do. So you will need to do this and create a new secret key. And once a secret key is generated, you will need to copy that and utilize this in your OpenAI agent code. And once you are here, you will just paste it right here as so, and then just run this particular cell. Make sure you complete the step. And if you haven't, just replay this section again till and until you get your, your own OpenAI key. This code is not going to run without a valid OpenAI key. Now, next, we will need to run some of the functions. So just you know, turn this as so. And now comes the helpful part where you are designing your own persona. What a persona means is how you want the Gen AI chatbot in order to explain the information to you. For instance, here, what I'm doing is I'm asking what you are a helpful uh, virtual assistant who is explaining uh, to a graduate, to an engineering graduate, right? So please answer based off of the information uh, you know, available. If you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. And also make sure that there is, a, you know, your responses are in bullet points and also there's a summary in under 300 tokens, right? So that is, you know, a persona that I I have put, you can definitely go in and change that. So let me uh, run the persona and then I run this uh, this question. You can see it will take some time uh, in order to generate. In this case, it's actually a DuckDuckGo search. DuckDuckGo, again, is a, is a, is a way in which you can do your search. Um, so this will get uh, get into a DuckDuckGo search and then it will get you back the, the information and it will also give you finally a, a short summary corresponding to. Now let's change it and say that you are a virtual assistant who is explaining to a five-year-old. And now let's ask a, a, a little more pertinent question to a five-year-old. Um, why is the solar system 
um, why is the solar system so big? So typically, this would be a question that a five-year-old would ask. And in this case, it's it's again going to go do a, do a DuckDuckGo search, and then it's going to come back with the responses. But if you see, it says the solar system is big due to gravitational pull. The formation of the solar system forms a rotating gas, a disk of gas, and allowed uh, for the spread of matter over a large area, presence of multiple planets, and the distances between the sun and the planets, uh, you know, tend to the, to the size of the overall solar system. So it also gives you the summary. As you can see, the, the way the, the intonation has very much changed, and now this is easily digestible by a five-year-old. Let's try to ask another question. Uh, you are a virtual uh, assistant who is explaining to a financial analyst. The beauty of using and designing your own uh, virtual assistant and your own uh, AI agent is now you can ask predictive questions as well. And you ask a question like this. So ideally, if you ask a question such as this in any of the other, so it, it really told you which ones are the ones that are that are doing high. If you ask the same question to something like Gemini, let's try it. It is most likely going to, you know, take you where the, the right you know, locations are, but it is not going to give you the right information because it is ethically incorrect for any large language model to give you uh, information like this. The same thing, if you go to poll and ask the same question, it's also not going to be able to ask, answer the question, as you see. And then if you if you go back to, to chat GPT, now here is where the agent is, is trying to go search the web. So it's doing the top performing, uh, you know, uh, websites. So because it is now first going to the website and then getting the information from there, that is the reason why it is able to give you the right information. So, so if you wanted to have very accurate responses in your information retrieval and stay updated, you should always use an Gen AI agent. I hope you found it useful. I clearly had a great time creating this content. And please, please, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. In the next video, we are going to be learning how to create uh, your own recommendation engine using Gen AI agents. So stay tuned for way more fun tools and systems and code towards generative AI.